The atomic Hatcher road here in Accra will be closed to traffic for two days to allow officials of the Total Petroleum Company Limited carry out an evacuation exercise. They are pumping out thousands of liters of petrol and diesel stored underground at the Total Fuel Station adjacent the gas explosion site. A recent gas explosion at the Medina Atomic Junction area claimed seven lives and injured over 100 persons. Joint News Latifi Drews was at the evacuation site and has filed this report. After atomic junction gas explosion, which has so far claimed seven lives, uh, people are still counting their losses. And today, uh, officials from the uh, total fuel station are here trying to evacuate the fuel that is left in the tanks here at the fuel station. We have diesel and petrol still lodged in the tanks here. And officials of Total are here in the background. You can see this vehicle trying to get this evacuation exercise done properly. We have the Ghana National Fire Service also on standby in case of any ignition. I have an official uh, of the Ghana National Fire Service. He's going to join me briefly, officer, if you can join us. Uh, to tell us exactly what and why we have officials of the Ghana National Fire Service stationed here at the field station. During our meeting last Friday, that's the just past Friday, the officials here uh, advised that the remaining, uh, let's say, petrol and diesel should be evacuated, so at least to avoid any future occurrence of any distance since the station is not in use. So today is the day they are doing it and we are invited here just to be on standby in case of there's any uh, ignition or any distance. That's why that's why you see us here. In the report I just did I said official from total are those carrying out this evacuation exercise. Can you confirm this? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And how long is this evacuation exercise going to take? Okay, we started about, I think, uh, one and a half hour ago that it started. But they told us earlier that it might last about two hours. So we are still on standby until they finish. Do we know the amount of fuel that is in the tanks? No, we don't know. We'll be able to know the amount after they are done with the evacuation. Is it likely that this evacuation is done and dusted today? Oh, I'm not sure we can finish all today because they are, they, are, they are claiming due to the temperature. Because of the temperature, we can do with the diesel so that with the petrol for that one, unless the temperature is down. Why? Why is that? Can you educate us on that? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, petrol is highly volatile than uh, diesel. So definitely with a little heat, it can easily ignite. Uh -huh. that, that, that's why we want to wait. It's a precautionary measure there. Yeah. Yeah. Operation officer of Medina Fire Station telling us why the Ghana National Fire Service is here. But earlier we tried speaking to officials of Total Fuel Station. We told the communications director isn't available to speak to us on this evacuation exercise. So we are unable to get the side of the Total Fuel Station on how long this exercise is going to take, but from what we've gathered from the officials of the Ghana National Fire Service, it's unlikely this exercise is going to be concluded today. Probably it is going to go into tomorrow and maybe the day after. Students at the War Campus of the University for Development Studies are now deserting their hostels due to incessant robbery attacks. Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Gabriel Ayumte, noted that most of these attacks occurred at private hostels. Professor Tay also says, for fear of losing their lives, the students were staying in houses that were far away from the university. He was speaking at the 25th matriculation of the UDS in WA. Juxtaposing figures of application forms received last year and this academic year. Vice Chancellor of the University for Development Studies, Professor Gabriel Ayum Tai, noted that the university continues to record consistent decrease in the number of application forms for both undergraduate and the graduate programs. The university received a total of over 13,000 undergraduate 
and almost 800 postgraduate forms. The number of applications received this year was just 11,000, from 13 to 11. Clearly showing a drop in the number of applicants or applications received. This downward trend is, is being experienced by our sister universities across the country. However, he pointed out that there have been significant increase in the number of females admitted by the university this year as compared to that of last year. We admitted 7,971. Out of this number, 4,759 percent are males and 3,262.41 percent are female. This shows an increase in the number of females that were given admission for this year compared to last year's, which was 35, and rather a drop in the number of males from 71 percent last year to 65 this year. Professor Gabriel Ayumte said there is persistent sub increase in demand for persons who want to pursue medicine despite the limited space available. Uh, this year we had 722 qualified applicants for medical school, but we could only admit 100. So the 622, where are they? But we could not do that. So we are going to have a para program that will start in January. And very soon, before Christmas, they, <coughs> excuse me, those qualified will be invited for interview and then selected for this program. He thanked the various landlords and landladies across the various campuses of the university for partnering them to provide accommodation for the students. However, one area that has not been properly handled by the owners of these private hostels have been the security and safety of our students. There are several reports of thieves and miscreants breaking into the facilities to torment students and steal their items, especially in Wahia. It has come as no surprise that many of these hostel facilities in Wa again here, or Bamaho to be specific, have been deserted by the students. I therefore wish to call on the owners of these hostels, our opinion leaders, and all the security agencies to help us provide enough security for these private hostels. The university also used the opportunity to launch its 25th anniversary. Reporting for Dwe News, Rafik Salam. The Member of Parliament for BR West, Dr. August Interior, is asking colleague members of Parliament to stop shielding constituents who flout sanitation laws. Dr. Teria says this act by MPs is a reason Ghana has failed in a fight against insanitary practices. He was speaking at the commemoration of the Global Hand Washing Day held at the Insawam Road Church of Christ here in Accra. Derek Ekosam now reports. Statistics available to United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, shows that less than 15% of Ghanaian households have hand-washing facilities. Additionally, 22.9% of people in Ghana do not have access to any sanitation facility. Water and sanitation health experts have over the years chided government for its inability to enforce the sanitation laws. They accuse politicians of frustrating the efforts being made by stepping in to release people who are arrested for flouting the sanitation laws. But Member of Parliament for BR West, Dr. August Interior, wants this trend to stop. I have heard those things and I have told my, told my constituents, in BR West, if you don't clean your house and the sanitation team comes there, if your goats and sheep are roaming town and they arrest them, you pay the fine as prescribed by law. I will, I will want to urge all my colleagues in Parliament to do the same thing because it is for our own well-being. There's no point in trying to circumvent the law and helping people do that. Let us learn, because the same people will get sick, they will come to me for money. They won't have health insurance, and I have to spend more money. If he dies, I have to buy a casket. So let him wash his hand and pass that tradition on to everybody else. Extension Services Coordinator of the Community Water and Sanitation Agency, Theodora Adumakuwejei, is asking churches to lead the campaign for hand washing with soap and running water. 
15th October this year is an auspicious day because it's a Sunday. And as you can see, we have done the national celebration in church. You know, Ghanaians, a lot of us go to church. And a lot of us also believe in what our pastors, our ministers, our reverends, they tell us. So we think that if we bring on board the churches, we can also cover a lot of the population for them to know about the importance of hand washing with soap. So what we are saying is this, your future is in your hands. Adopt hand washing with soap at the critical times. That is after visiting the toilet and before handling food. That is before you cook, before you eat, and before you serve others food. Let's invest in our health. Let's spread the word about hand washing with soap and demonstrate the importance of clean hands. UNICEF's head of water and sanitation hygiene, David Duncan, also asked government to invest more money into the fight for good sanitation. Government needs to be investing money in programs which are actually getting people into communities and helping people in those communities understand why the decisions they're making are poor for their health and help empower those communities to actually take the, on those decisions and solve their own problems. And that's it's something where the communities will actually deliver that, those results for you, but you need to help them in the first place. You need to help them understand why what they're doing is causing their children to be sick and why what they're doing is causing them to be sick. Um, UNICEF is supporting government to actually do that. We're providing financial support to government to get into many of those remote communities. We're providing technical support to government to understand, well, how we're doing things, is that the best way to do things? And how do we just improve both the implementation and also get better results, basically? I think there's a lot of work required to build the, the capacity, the ability of government, the local government district assemblies, to actually implement the regulations. I think the, there's a lot of work required to help the officers themselves understand the regulations better and also to help the assemblies understand how they can actually regulate and how they can hold people accountable for that. So I think there's a long way to go on that. The theme for Global Hand Washing Day 2017 is Our Hands, Our Future. For Joy News, Derek Akosam. The Nursing and Midwifery Council has warned it will deal ruthlessly with health workers who misconduct themselves at their respective workplaces. The registrar, Felix Nyante, tells Joy News the council has intensified monitoring and supervision to fish out workers who mistreat patients. He says though reported cases of neglect have reduced in recent times, the council also expects nurses and midwives to respect the people they serve. Mr. Nyante spoke at the induction of nurses and nursing assistants and midwives in the middle belt in the country. I promise to care for the sick with all the skill I process, no matter what their race, greed, color, political or social status, sparing no effort to conserve life, alleviate pain and promote health. That is how the second line of the nurses' pledge reads, but some members of the public have different view on how the nurses conduct themselves at health facilities. Two weeks ago, I went to a hospital, a hospital around airport roundabout. In fact, I was attacked by asthma. And when I went there, I went for consultation, and then the doctor asked me to see the other nurse. I went there, and this nurse was asking me to pay 1.7 before I could attend the trip. Meanwhile, I, I was under asthmatic attack. So you could imagine this scenario. You see, under severe emergency care, and you are asking me to pay 1.7. I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense. Mr. Nyante says authorities will not allow any health worker to go scot-free if found guilty of misconduct. Measures have been put in place, and you yourself, you can testify that these cases are now on the decrease. We, are, we have strengthened our supervision, we have strengthened our monitoring, and any nurse or midwives that we, uh, uh, is reported in that manner, the person is brought to book or sanctioned appropriately within the legal framework of our constitution. Certain times we suspend them, other times we withdraw their certificates, other times we even send them to court and the court slaps some penalties on them, fines on them. 
he advised the inductees from Ashanti and Bono Ahafu regions to be of good behavior at their various designate areas. Deputy Minister of Health Tina Na Ayele Mensa emphasized improved health care delivery in the country. We need to step up our effort on preventive health and encourage more Ghanaians to adapt healthy health styles so as to prevent or delay the onset of chronic diseases in the first instance. We need to rely less on acute hospital care and focus more on private in pri primary care and caring for pay, uh, persons with multiple conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that if we are to improve the standard of living of our people, then we must improve their health. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin reporting. The president, Anado Dankwe Kufuado, has indicated that agriculture remains the fuel that powers all activities in Ghana and has assured all farmers of his government support. He explains it is a reason government launched its flagship program, Planting for Foods and Jobs. Well, the president made the statement at the 41st annual community festival of the chiefs and people of the Laura traditional area. Rafik Salam now reports from Laura. This sound of a local made food, known in local parlance as Hore, signifies the start of the Kobine Festival. Kobine Festival is celebrated by the chiefs and people of the Lora traditional area after a successful farming season. This year's event was attended by people from all walks of life, including a high-powered government delegation led by President Ekufo Ado and other top government functionaries. It is the first time in 13 years that a high-powered government delegation led by a president is attending a festival in the Upper West region. In attendance also were some prominent chiefs from the southern belt of the country and a delegation from neighboring Burkina Faso. Paramount chief of the Lora traditional area, Napo Wele Kabo III, commended the government for initiating policies which are geared towards reducing the burden on the citizenry. We particularly applaud you for the bold decision to implement the free senior high school policy which you promised. This policy has brought a lot of relief to parents and reduced the usual anxiety anytime there are fresh admissions into senior high schools. The free senior high school policy is a pure investment, a sure investment in the future of our children and a guarantee of our future prosperity as a nation. My people and I have faith in your ability and commitment to carry through all these laudable projects and assure government of our unwavering support and cooperation in the implementation of your vision. The Deputy Minister for Roads and Highways, a member of Parliament for Laura Constituency, Anthony Injo Abayifakabo, laid bare his plans for the Laura District. The future of the constituency rests with us, the young. I recognize the challenges you face, and we are going to work to ensure that the MP's apprenticeship program which will employ, which will train and employ many of the young people to start their own businesses and employ others as their businesses grow. This package will also include startup capital and tools for individuals who complete the program. President Ekufo Adu noted that for the country to achieve any meaningful change in the life of its people, efforts should be directed at agriculture. The majority of people can only feel a change in their lives when we develop agriculture. In Ghana, we've been making some progress, especially in the cocoa sector, but nowhere near enough in the stables like rice, maize, and soya. If we are to make headway, there has to be a fundamental change in attitude towards agriculture. Agriculture should not be a single crop industry. Farming is a business, and it is a profession that must be promoted and studied like all other professions. It is for this reason that his government launched its flagship program, Planting for Food and Jobs. Government through this 
The Accra Region Police Command will close some roads temporarily today, October 16, 2017. President Alassane Watani of Cote d'Ivoire is expected in Ghana for bilateral discussions with President Nanai Kufado. The roads are the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue towards the Central Business District, the Liberation Road towards the Central Business District, and the Atamils Highway from Jamestown towards Susu. They will be closed from 11 a.m. and open after a scheduled ceremonial procession. And that's it for the latest news tidbits we have in the... <music>